Right now on the boards you're seeing remnants of what we had when we were recording our last video, where we considered the operation of reflection, chose this particular basis, and constructed this matrix that represented this transformation in the component space with respect to this basis. So what we're going to do right now is consider an alternative basis and repeat part of the same exercise. So our new basis will be the vector E2 will be the same, but instead of E1, we'll use this vector. Also at the 45 degree angle to the line, so we're actually going to change the names of these vectors. So this will be F1, this will now also be F2, and let's now figure out the matrix that represents this transformation with respect to this new basis F which of course consists of F1 and F2. Okay, this chalk is actually blue. I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen. It looks a little white right now, but I think it'll come through as blue, a different color. Okay, so we'll now construct R sub F. Okay, it's also a two by two matrix. And once again, it's being constructed column by column, and the first column will represent R of F1, and here we go. So F1, R of F1 is of course this vector right here, is of course this vector right here, okay, this is R of F1, okay, and we now have to decompose this resulting vector in terms of the same basis F1, F2. And naturally, it is minus F2, so the components of this vector are 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1. Is that correct? 0, negative 1. Great. Now let's construct the second column, R of F2. So let's see what F2 is. R of F2 is this vector right here. This is R of F2, which of course equals minus F1. So minus F1, none of F2, so negative 1, 0. And this matrix represents the very same linear transformation, but in another basis. So one thing that we notice is that the numbers have changed completely. Not one number is the same. So the matrix is completely different, but it represents the very same linear transformation. So what has changed? The basis. So let's consider just one vector, uh, this very first vector that we considered, V, which I believe was this vector right here, V. And of course, R of V is this vector right here. Okay, and we'll do it, we'll repeat the calculation that we did in the original basis, and then we'll do the same thing in the new basis. So in the original basis, V was E2 minus E1. So V was, <laughs> I forgot again, E2 minus E2 minus E1, so minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, and of course multiplication by this, let me make sure that it fits, I believe it does, so R of V is given by multiplying this matrix by this vector right here, and of course it was 1 and negative 1. And of course, with respect to the original basis, it does represent this vector. The coefficients 1, negative 1 represent this vector, so everything worked great. Now let's repeat the same exercise, blue chalk, with respect to the new basis. And with respect to the new basis, V is half of F1 plus half of F2. It's the exact average of the two vectors. So we have to write that V equals one half, one half. 
with respect to the basis F. So completely different from its components in the original basis B. So the components has all, have also changed. And of course R of V is obtained by multiplying this vector by this matrix. And of course the answer is, you can, multiply, you can do this multiplication rather easily, minus a half, minus a half. And now this vector, minus a half, minus a half, in this new basis, once again results in this very vector. So here's what we're learning. We're once again seeing that all bases are created equal. It's our ongoing theme that the choice of the basis should be dictated by the problem. And for this problem, maybe the second basis is a little bit nicer because this matrix has a couple more zeros and is also symmetric. So it's a very nice matrix. But of course, all of the numbers have changed completely. So choice of basis changes virtually all of the numbers in the component space. Everything here is different. Everything here is different. The one thing that remained unchanged is that the whole scheme works. That if this is the input vector, this is indeed the components of the, these are the components of the input vector. Multiplication by this matrix delivers the components of the output vector. And we check and it's correct. And while everything orange corresponds to the basis B, everything blue corresponds to the basis F and works the same way. So all of the numbers change, but the real life interpretation remains unchanged because the component representation and the basis work together. The basis is different, the numbers in the representation are different, but once you put it all together, it gets back to the very same, or the very same true geometric vector. So the reality doesn't change. And of course it can't possibly change because this reflection could have been carried out without any basis at all. So this resulting vector is not a matter of our choice of basis or what happens in the component space. It is what it is. It's just that it can also be obtained by our using the component space in the way that we did. And there is one other thing that didn't change, of course. These two matrices, as different as they are, still have something in common. And the things that they have in common, of course, is their eigenvalues. Right? The eigenvalues of this matrix were 1 and minus 1. And this matrix will have the same eigenvalues. Why? Because the trace equals 0. So the sum of the eigenvalues equals 0. So they must be opposite. And its determinant is minus 1. So not only are they opposites of each other, they must be 1 and negative 1. So all the numbers changed, but all of the fundamental and the right word is invariant characteristics of this linear transformation remain unchanged. In particular, the eigenvalues remain unchanged. And there are two, one, really, follow-up question that I would like to ask, not to answer, but just to start thinking about. What is the relationship between these two matrices or any other matrix that represents this linear transformation with respect to some other basis? How are they related? The fact that they have identical eigenvalues suggests that they're related by a similarity transformation. But this question is for later. It'll, have, it'll fall under the subject of change of basis and we'll answer that question then. By now, walk away with the understanding that we can use whatever basis we choose and the same scheme works for any basis with only the numbers changing.